Hello, so we are at Norris LT, and my name is Karolis. Uh, I am a veterinary doctor, uh, but now I'm working at Norris as a production manager. So shortly about our company, so Norris LT is now four and a half years as growing Arctic char, and I'm working here since 2018. So we are growing Arctic char, and it's a cold water fish uh, from salmon species. Uh, so we decided to grow it firstly because it's a niche fish in Lithuania, and then we are the only ones or the first ones who started to grow it. Secondly, it's about the fish taste and meat quality. So uh, this fish doesn't have as intense uh, taste as a salmon. Also, it's not as greasy as salmon. Uh, so meat, meat, meat quality is quite nice and taste is very good. So our clients are mainly supermarkets, also local restaurants. Uh, and we have in the, uh, private in individual persons who orders small amounts of the fish. Uh, so we are selling mainly portion size and big size fish. So portion is from 400 grams, it's about 400 grams, and bigger ones is from 1 kilo up to 3 kilos. So now we are selling it only in Lithuania, also, but our future plans are to export it. Uh, our growing capacity is, is about 300 tons a year. And it consists of four separate systems. So incubator or hatchery, uh, system B as a juvenile system, and two big ones, and it's for grow out, fish grow out system. We are growing Arctic char from egg to commercial size. Uh, we, we decided to, to buy eggs, but not to grow our own brood stock just because uh, cost efficiency, so it's not cost effective to, to grow it by our, ourselves. We are importing, importing uh, eggs uh, from Canada now, but before that we were uh, testing eggs from Norway, Poland uh, and, and other suppliers. So we found the best genetics, best supplier, and we are quite happy with the Canada eggs. Our company has 12 employees, uh, 10 of them work at, at farm as uh, full-time workers. So uh, four, of him, four of them are aquaculture specialists. Also we have four uh, aquaculture technicians and one person is responsible for sales. Our in incubator uh, is Scandinavian style vertical incubator and uh, we can hatch about 300,000 eggs per one time. So eggs come to our hatchery eight stage, uh, and uh, they are hatching for about one, one month up to hatching, and from 250 and 300 degree days up to moving to the uh, first feeding system. Uh, also, you can uh, control the hatching time by controlling the temperature, but generally it's the best practice to hold temperature from 2 to 8 degrees. So this is how it looks our incubator. So this is a simple RAS system. So main thing is the good water quality, uh, also oxygen. So oxygen levels in the outlet shouldn't be less than 95%. Uh, so, yeah, here is the vertical incubator. We are trying to use only one layer of eggs here because of uh, uh, preventing the infections and also for the staff easier to pick up the dead eggs. Um, also, what's nice with this incubator is that uh, all hatched eggs, or the alvin, after hatching, goes down through these holes. 
to the bottom where is the substrate in where the alevin goes down and, and uh, saves energy and is not swimming because it's it's if there is no substrate it's very difficult for the for the uh, larva to keep uh, the balance so he is constantly moving and 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 using his yolk sac for for not only developing but 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 moving the dead eggs should be removed as fast as possible uh, to, to prevent the infections. Uh, so we are using uh, small pliers to take it out, or you can use a siphon if there is uh, too much or a lot of dead eggs. You just siphon it out, and it's way easier work for the guys. Also, one more thing to mention is the lighting. So you, you shouldn't use intense light for the eggs. It's a bit harmful, so now it's not the best conditions for the eggs. Um, especially is bad and harmful for eggs is UV lighting from, from the sun. So we keep incubator as dark as possible and when guys are picking eggs out we are using a small LED light for, with a red with a red color to not harm the, the eggs. So after uh, hatching, uh, larva is consuming uh, its uh, yolk sac, and when it consumes from 70 to 80 percent of a yolk sac, it swims up, and uh, it's ready for the first feeding. So we move that fish to the next system, system B. So system B is a juvenile growing system, and uh, its volume is about 65 cubic meters. Uh, system consists of 10 tanks. Uh, six of them are smaller ones and consist of uh, 1.9 cubic meters. And four are the bigger ones. And they are about four and five and a half cubic meters each. The most difficult uh, procedure or cycle of, of this system is first feeding. So you can you, you need to feed fish every 30 minutes and 24 hours a day and constantly you can increase it but this period uh, takes up to 2 weeks so guys have to work all night shifts and all, all day all night let's say uh, after that we turn on the uh, automatic feeders and then the work is much easier. After that, when, when the fish reach 5 grams, then it comes the first grading time. So we are grading the fish at first time at, at 5 grams. So this is system B, the juvenile system. Uh, it's a typical rust system. So water from the tanks goes into the drum filter where it is stripped out of uh, uh, particles, let's say, feed and feces. Then the water, clean water goes to the biofilter, where it's clean for all the toxic material, ammonia and nitrates. And water goes back to the main pump sump, where it's oxygenated and goes back to the tank as a new water supply. And also another pump takes water to the trickling filter where all the gases like CO2 is stripped out from the water and back to the main pump sump, back to the tanks. Uh, so here we can see already grown fish. So they are about three months old uh, and they are ready for the grading actually. <laughs> so in a few days we will be grading that fish to those empty tanks. You can see there. And you can see here these are a bit younger fish. They are about one month old. And they're looking quite good and happy waiting for some feed. So fish here are growing uh, for up to 15 grams and then they are transferred to the 
next system, grow out system. Uh, so juveniles are growing from 8 to 12 degrees. Uh, we've also we are adding salt, so we have uh, about 2 ppt of, of, of salt. And the bigger fish, uh, usually we are growing it from 10 to 12 degrees Celsius. So this is uh, one of our grow out systems. It's actually pretty same as a system before, but only the bigger scale. So you see the drum filter is four times bigger, maybe five. Also you can see here two oxygen cones for oxygenating water, a huge uh, trickling filter, and also main, main uh, pump sums and all that stuff. So System A is a grow out system and its volume is 500, about 500 cubic meters. Uh, it consists of 22 uh, separate tanks, which are about 13 cubic each. Um, and we can grow there about 42 tons of, of, of fish. So system A is way bigger than uh, system B and we cannot operate it by hand. So we have equipment uh, such as fish pump, uh, bigger graders, and uh, also you, you, you must have counters to, to track the number of, of fish you are grading and uh, also the average weight of the fish, that helps a lot. Uh, also in system A we have a separate uh, purging tank. Uh, so fish stays there for one week uh, to, to lose all the off flavor and uh, we are cleaning the fish before selling. Uh, also it's important to mention that you have to track all your data in the farm. Uh, it's uh, average weights, uh, water quality parameters, uh, grading, all that stuff. So uh, we are using AquaManager program and we are cooperating with the team. So it, it helps us a lot to, to track information. Let's say some kind of, uh, you have some kind of incidents of, of fish dying or, or something, you can go back and, and just check what was wrong. So I recommend everyone to, to have some kind of a software for, for tracking the data. So as I mentioned, this is system A with 22 tanks and this is our purging tank. Uh, so now there is a fish ready for the supermarket. After one week, uh, one week they are going to the sales and to the person's tables. Um, so this system has, as you see, automatic feeders and then no need to, to stay here for the personnel. Um, as I mentioned before, we use fish pump and graders for the transferring fish. So now there are two empty tanks ready for the grading. Um, so here we have, in this system, we have various size of fish from 300 gram up to market size fish of 1.5 to 3 kilos. Um, so yeah, here you can see almost portion size arctic char enjoying the water. So maybe you, you can wonder why you see those foams on the top of the tank. So this is because we are adding salt. It helps to, to fish clean better and in general to feel better. So that's why this foam is gathering on the top. So it's normal and okay. So here we can see a market size fish. It's about one and a half kilo. There are also bigger ones, but, but yeah, so quite good, beautiful fish. Yeah, and waiting for the supermarket. Yeah, and, and here we have a market size Arctic char for the uh, supermarkets. This is the good example for the filet. So it's about two to two and a half kilos Arctic char. Uh, 
Um, so recently we have built uh, a new farm extension by our uh, partners from Norway, uh, Norris WaterTech team. Uh, so system is uh, consists of, of, of three separate modules. Each module has uh, two tanks, and the tank volume is about 160 cubic meters. So the tank width is eight meters, and the depth is three and a half meters. The main equipment in, in, in this system is a vacuum tower. So its function is uh, not only provide water to inlets by uh, airlift and, and vacuum help, but also to degas CO2. Uh, and also it can strip, uh, it, it can work as a protein skimmer. So it can, it can, it can, it can strip proteins out of the system. Uh, so the main component in, in system C is a vacuum tower, which I mentioned is designed by our uh, engineers from, from Norway, from Norris WaterTech. And basical principle is that, that uh, it lifts up the water by uh, force of the bubbles and the combination of a vacuum you don't need uh, an electrical engines for, for water flow, flow to inlets. Uh, also, what's good with, with that system that the, this vacuum tower also strips out the CO2 and uh, other gases as uh, ozone, because we are using ozone too. And third, third thing about that is good about this tower is the protein skimming. So it skims out the protein and uh, takes out of the system. So this is our newest farm extension designed by Norris Water Tech team. Uh, so I will be shouting because it's very loud in here, so I hope you will hear me. So this, as I mentioned, uh, there we have three modules. Each module has two tanks with uh, 160 cubic meter uh, tanks. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is our uh, vacuum tower, the, the main equipment in this uh, module. So all water by uh, bubble force and uh, vacuum power is sucked into the inlets and creates the flow into the tanks. Also, as I mentioned, so it is also stripping the gases as CO2 and the ozone, and also it is uh, uh, stripping all the uh, foams, uh, proteins. So yeah, let's go further. Uh, so also before that, we we were thinking of. Uh, growing the smaller size fish in here. So we had a, a dead fish trap in here. I will show you in the next module we have still that trap. But now we are using a airlift system just to take the bigger fish, dead fish out of the, of the bottom of the tank. So yeah, mainly because of the size and it is, it can clog the pipes. So I will show you the trap in the next module. Okay, so while drum filter is not working very shortly, so this is how we get rid of the uh, particles. We have combination of the drum filter and the lamella filter. So drum filter get rid of the uh, big particles like feces and feed, and lamella filter is for the small particles. So the, the small particles get sedimentated on the lamella. And time to time, the pump gets on and gets rid of the, all the small particles. So under our legs or below us, we have a biofilter, uh, where is a biomedia created by our uh, Norris WaterTech team. It's called a honeycomb biomedia. And here, uh, 
bacteria are removing all the ammonia and nitrates and all that stuff. As I mentioned before, so this is a, an example of our uh, fish trap for the dead fish. So I will show you how is it work, how does it work. So I pull this lever, I pull this lever and the trap goes up. And all the dead fish goes into that net over there. I will show it afterwards. So, oh, I'm... And all that dead fish goes into the net. Okay, I'll put them back for now. Okay, and very shortly, this is the last module. It is almost finished. So we have a few more things to do. Grow some bacteria in, in, in the biofilter and we will be grading that fish and sorting in, in the next tanks. So yeah, as I said before, it is eight meter tanks, three and a half meters depth. And as you see, there are two inlets. We have a, an emergency oxygen supply in the bottom to you know, provide an extra oxygen after feeding or something. So it automatically adds the needed oxygen levels to the system. And also constant oxygen supply is going through the inlet. And also you can see in the bottom the hole for the dead fish to go up through the trap. Or we can install the uh, airlift if the fish will be bigger and won't fit through that hole. Um, also, I wanted to mention that we recently started a new experimental uh, aquaponic system. So now we are checking what kind of plants we can grow uh, in our temperatures with our fish. So this is our experimental aquaponic system. So now we are trying to grow some salads, uh, tomatoes, and also the plant, I don't know in English, we call it Rhodonelis in Lithuania. So, yeah. So the plants are planted a few days ago maybe free, so they are just starting to uh, get used to the new environment. And yeah, uh, we are thinking about the future and maybe, maybe we will have some kind of uh, aquaponic system. We found it that it, it's not so easy to find a good specialist when you need it. So I encourage uh, young experts and specialists to to gather knowledge uh, and experience and to, to join this industry. So in conclusion, uh, three short things what is necessary for successful aquaculture business. Ah, first is good egg suppliers and good genetics. Second, uh, good water quality and also feed quality. And the third one, is specialists and skills. So thank you for your attention and hope you enjoyed it.